Wadsworth has been a weather presenter for ITV Wales for over two decades. But for many of those years, behind closed doors, she endured abusive and controlling behaviour at the hands of her husband, Jonathan Wignall. He was sentenced to three years in prison after being found guilty of coercive behaviour and stalking. But now, after serving just half of that sentence, he's set to be released. And Ruth says she's concerned for her safety and this evening presents a Tonight programme on her plight. It wasn't until my own children began to fear for my safety Freedom! that I realised what was going on wasn't normal. Freedom! In October 2019, I finally called the police and my then husband was arrested. I was having last night, mate. What do you mean? Well, she's called us this morning. Yeah. Saying that you were quite um, persistent on the phone last night. She's my wife. I know, yeah. but 200 times. You're, you're going to have to be arrested, mate. Why? Because of harassment. That's a lot of phone calls. No. Let me speak to her. Ray! Ray! Hey! Ray! Stay there. Now, Ruth Dodsworth joins us now. Ruth, you just said then, we heard that little clip where, when he was arrested and the fact that he'd called you 200 times and you said... That, that was, was nothing. nothing. Yeah, I mean, that, that really was just the tip of the iceberg. Um, in, in the run-up to that particular event, that arrest, I would say that his behaviour had, had escalated to a point where it was hundreds and hundreds of phone calls a day, constant text messages, where are you, what are you doing, who are you with? And, you know, when you're living like that, it, mm. it's, it's very, very difficult. I mean, I was in work, couldn't answer the phone, but that didn't stop him. Mm. He just kept, kept on going. So, yeah, 200 phone calls, that, that was nothing. But his response there, if, if you listen, was, mm. she's my wife. And, and that, that really, I think, was the key to all of it, is that, you know, I was his wife, I was his possession, and, in a sense, that, that gave him the right to do pretty much what he wanted and treat me the way that he wanted, you know? So you got to a point where you drew the line, mm. you pursued the case, he was found guilty yep. and got three years, and now, having only served half of that, you can't... I imagine on the day he was sentenced, you hoped that would be an end to it. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's... I, I often get asked, you know, did he get long enough? What's your feeling about the sentence? And, you know... I think for me, I never set out for anyone to go to prison. It wasn't about that. But, right. you know, thankfully, you know, the authorities, the police, the C uh, CPS realised that actually there was more going on and that, that it was it justified a prison sentence. So, you know, I think I, I was shocked because this is a man I've spent, you know, 20 years of my life with. He's the father of my children. And here I am effectively sending him to prison. I know it wasn't me doing it, and in fairness to the police, they've been brilliant in saying, well, actually, no, he's, he's doing this to himself. But, yeah, so the judge told him at the time that he would serve a minimum half. But then prior to that, so prior to that halfway point, because it's what they call a standard tariff, he can apply for what they call home release. So he'd be re released on tag and on a curfew, but he would still be out. And to a man who... Uh, to the best of my knowledge, has shown no remorse, um, has lost his wife, has lost that, that, that one thing that he had control over. My worry is that a restraining order is a bit of paper, a tag doesn't really matter, and there's nothing really, you know... Has he learned? Is he really going to change after a whole lifetime? Mm. Of Are you so what do you fear yeah. he'll do, yes, mm. when he comes out? I, I'm, I am scared. Mm. I, I'm very scared. I'm, I'm, you know, my family is scared, my mum. Um, we do worry about what's going to happen as as you know and you can't keep people behind bars forever that that is the reality and there are so many people in my situation but you know we we, we have to be sensible we've had home visits from the police so you know basic stuff like putting locks on doors and windows because know? there was a moment wasn't there i mean i mean reading about it again and i've read your story a few times now that there was a time i think that you were, were thinking of going home and then your children texted you to say yeah listen we're okay yeah but if you come He's going to kill you. He will you. kill you. And that, that actually was the night before he was arrested and the footage that we saw then, right. uh, the body cam footage, that was actually half past eight in the morning. He had been effectively on what we can only describe as a, a sort of alcohol fueled, fueled rampage for about 24 hours. Mm -hmm. So that, that was at the point, over the, 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 the few hours prior to that, that was when my children... I knew my children were safe and my mum and dad lived around the corner and they could get out of the house, but they were texting me saying, and, and, and ringing me saying, please, mum, don't come home, don't come home. And you could see, you know, just in that short piece how volatile, how violent he actually was at that point. And, you know... Mm. So do you want him to have nothing to do with, obviously, you, but also your children, because one would assume that 
he is still going... To, he's still their father. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, at the time of sentencing, the judge said, you are a danger to your ex-wife and to your children. Now, I've been very careful because my children are... Well, they're teenagers. My daughter mm. is 18. My son, Jack, is 16. And I've, I've sort of... I've almost made a concerted effort not to sort of say, you can't do this, you can't have contact, because who knows how they might feel in five years' time, mm. ten years' time. And mm. I, I don't want to be that parent who sort of said, no, he is, as, as you say, Kate, he is still their dad at the end of the day. How I feel mm. about potential contact is, is, a, is a different matter. Yeah. And I would... Yeah, I, I would be very, very worried. How, how old are the kids now? Well, Grace is going to be... She's going to be 19 this year, which is right. absolutely horrifying. <laughs> um, and my son, Jack, is 16. So, yeah. you know, they, they've, they, they've lived a whole life, if you like, yeah. with, with, in, in yeah. an abusive household. Talking about living a whole life, the other thing that occurs to me when I read your story is that how many people, probably at home right now, no. who are in these kind of relationships... Yeah. You know, people checking up on you. Tell me when you've got to work. There was an incident you said they wanted you to FaceTime you yeah. to make sure you weren't with anybody yeah, else. Yeah. I mean, or if people... not, even in that... Ext I think this is what we were saying, wasn't it, Adol, that they might not be in the extreme circumstances yes. that eventually made you crack, yeah. if you like. Yeah. Yeah. But there are things that they're spotting. And it's very hard, isn't it, sometimes, when you're in that relationship to spot... What is someone just being a bit over the top, yeah, a bit, a bit, but loving? Yeah, and almost, it's and... almost quite nice in a way, that sort of possessiveness, and he's a little bit jealous. Well, actually, that's that, you know, in the throes of an early relationship, yeah, that's, that's it almost... Can see, that's it can appear like caring, yeah, can't yeah, yeah. it? Yeah, it's because so, he loves me. What would you advise them to do? Mm. What are the danger signs? Well, I mean, you know, hindsight is an amazing thing, and I can look back on my relationship and, and, and sort of recognise that there were signs almost from day one. So... You know, sort of, uh, he, he would lose his temper very, very quickly. He, he would be the nicest person one minute and then just switch completely. So we were constantly walking on eggshells, waiting, if you like, for that eruption to happen, that change in behaviour. And, and, and very often, sort of, a, a, a verbal argument would turn into something physical. And, you know, mm. he was very good at sort of, he'd push, he'd grab me by the throat. He, he'd, mm. You know, he, he could be very, very physical. So it's easy to recognise the signs, but coercive control is a very different thing because it's insidi it's hidden. It's, it doesn't necessarily mean you have bruises on your face. It can mm. be, you know, stripping away of contact with friends and family, taking your money so you don't have the means to get out. Mm. And it, it, mm. it's, it's very, very difficult to spot. And actually, do you know what? That's why I'm doing this. Because mm. I didn't know what coercive mm. controlling behaviour was. It almost took the police saying to me, mm. Ruth, this is classic. That's exactly what this behaviour is. Mm. And so I now recognise it, but... You know, mm. we need guess, to speak about this. Uh, mm. uh, we've been talking about the police a lot this morning, and actually, probably mm. to their credit, in your situation, yeah. they responded exactly how you would have wanted them to respond. And I yeah. wonder whether a lot of people, and got men and women, yeah. probably feel if I'm going to go to the police, they're just going to say, "Oh, come mm. on, this is just a normal relationship, isn't it?" Or this is what happens yeah. in a marriage, or this is what happens in. But, but encouragingly, you yes. got the right kind of support and guidance. Coercive, the coercive, controlling behaviour, and domestic abuse can happen to absolutely anybody, any age, man, woman, doesn't matter your background, doesn't matter who you are. Mm. It happens to me, um, the more we're talking about it, the more people are kind of getting to realise and recognise what this behaviour is and, and actually that it's criminal behaviour. Yeah. But obviously, people are only going to speak up and come forward if they feel that they're going to be believed and listened to and that, you know, the police are going to help. And absolutely, you know, South Wales Police, for me, listened. They recognised. They didn't just put it down to a bit of a ding-dong between, a ma you know, a man and his mm. wife. And, and actually, they saw what wasn't there as opposed to, you know, what was perhaps in front of them, which was a lovely mm. home and, mm. you know, could have just mm. been a, a, an argument, but they spotted that there was more going on. And thank goodness, because those two young male police officers who might not have had a huge amount of training, mm. in that moment arrested him. And, and by doing that, they saved my life, mm. they saved wow. my children and they saved my family. Mm. And you genuinely believe? Oh, absolutely. You know, for my children, I think, to say, he will kill you... Um, yeah. It's still, mm. you know, that still haunts me. So, so now he's mm. he's due out later this year. Yes. Uh, you said you're worried, but have you have you put any protections in place? Have you spoken to the police? Again, or yeah, or absolutely. About... And there are protections in place, and mm. we do have a lifetime restraining order. Again, it's a case of you know living sensibly, putting locks on doors and windows, just being a bit careful. But you know what I also want to say is, you, you can do that, but you can still have a happy life mm. after. Mm. You know, I had 20 years of domestic abuse and coercive control, but, you know, my life now is so, so good and I'm so happy. And I wake up and I smile and I have a reason to wake up and smile as opposed mm. to waking up and crying, mm. which I, mm. I did for so many years. And, you know, to, to anybody who thinks that making that call and that change mm. is, is too hard, it is hard, but it's so worth it because you can have a happy life. Just one last, if he is watching, mm. you know, if he gets to watch this interview, what would you want to say to him now? 
such a difficult, I've got so many things I'd like to say, but I would like him to understand that despite his behavior, I and his children are very, very, very happy. And that to me, that's winning at life. That really, really is. Gosh. <laughs> well, incredible, incredible to hear your story and let's hope it will help others. And, yeah. and we look forward to seeing your full extended version. Thanks so what much. Time is it tonight? It's, it's at half past eight tonight. It's tonight ITV. Yeah. on ITV. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thanks very Thank much. You, Ruth.